Here we're gonna derive a nice little integral identity. In particular, we're gonna show that as long as these integrals converge, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx is the same as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus one over x dx. In other words, we can compose this x minus one over x inside the function and we don't change the value of the integral. Okay, so we're just gonna do this by direct substitution and calculation, starting with the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and start on this right-hand side. So we've got this integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of x minus one by x dx. But we're gonna split this up into two integrals, which is the precise way to handle an integral over the entire real line. So we'll split this up into the integral from zero to infinity. We've got f of x minus one over x dx, and then plus the integral from zero to infinity of f of x minus one over x dx. And now we're gonna recall the precise definition of these improper integrals involving limits. So this first one maybe we'll call the limit as t goes to minus infinity and a goes to zero from the left. This zero from the left is super important because we're going from numbers that are below zero of the integral from t to a of f of x minus one over x dx. Then we'll do the same kind of thing here. So this is gonna be plus, now we have the limit as maybe we'll say s goes to infinity and b goes to zero from the right Again, it's important to have this one-sided limit here. So B is going to zero from the right because here we're looking at numbers that are bigger than zero. Now we've got this integral from B to S of F of X minus one over X DX. Great. Now we're gonna apply the same substitution to each of these integrals. And that substitution will, will be given by u equals minus one over x. Notice that's the same thing as x equals minus one over u, which implies that dx is one over u squared du, just taking the derivative. So we'll take this value for u, one over x, and this value for dx and change these integrals. So let's see what we get for that. So here we're gonna have this limit as t goes to minus infinity, and then a goes to zero from the left, and then the integral, we'll talk about the bounds of integration in just a second, but notice that our f of x minus one over x becomes f of u minus one over u, given this substitution has kind of got this nice symmetric flavor to it. So I can write here f of u minus one over u, and now my dx, like I said before, is one over u squared du. And now I've got this second one. So I've got plus, now this is the limit as s goes to positive infinity and b goes to zero from above. And then we've got this integral of the same thing, u minus one over u, one over u squared du. Good. <clears throat> and now what we would like to do is see what happens to the bounds of integration. So notice that these over here are x bounds. So x is running between t and a, and here x is running between b and s. So if x equals t, then that means um, u is equal to minus one over t. So we can maybe put that right here. This is minus one over t. And then if x equals a, then that means uh, this is minus one over a. Great, and then notice over here we have kind of the same thing. We'll have minus one over B, and then here we'll have one over S, and that's also negative. And now we can see what these limits are doing to these bounds. So notice as T goes to minus infinity, minus one over T is gonna charge towards zero, and it's gonna charge towards zero from above because the two minus signs will like cancel each other out. And then as A goes to zero from below, then minus one over A is gonna go towards positive infinity. Good. And then similarly, as B goes to zero from the right, this guy right here is gonna charge towards negative infinity. This guy right here is gonna charge towards zero from below. 
Great, so now let's rewrite each of these. So this first one will become the integral from zero to infinity of f, and now I'm just gonna switch out x with u because those are just dummy variables. So this is gonna be x minus one over x, one over x squared dx. And then we've got the integral from minus infinity to zero of f of x minus one over x times one over x squared dx, good. Now what we can do is push these back together and we can push those back together and we'll get the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus one over x times one over x squared dx. So now let's go ahead and look at the extreme left hand side and right hand side of what we have done. We've shown that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus one over x dx is the same thing as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus one over x times one over x squared dx. So I'll go ahead and erase the board and we'll start from that point and then keep going. So on the last board, we arrived at the equality of these two improper integrals. So they're both over the entire real line. They both include this f of x minus one over x term, but this guy also includes an one over x squared. So that means I can add them together and get twice whichever one I really wanna work with. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take twice my right hand side of my would be identity and I'm gonna pull it apart, leave one as is, replace one with this thing that we showed on the last board and now I'm gonna push them back together and that's gonna set up another substitution. So if I push these guys back together, I'll get the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus one by x, and then we're gonna have a coefficient of one from this one, plus a coefficient of one over x squared from this one. And now the important thing to notice here is that the derivative of this thing composed inside of f is exactly right here. The derivative of x minus one over x is exactly one plus one over x squared, and that's gonna be extremely helpful. But we need to break this into two more integrals, and that's because this one plus one over x squared and this x minus one over x both have a discontinuity at zero, so we have to take care of that as well. So I'm gonna break this into the integral from minus infinity to zero of this thing. So I've got f of x minus one over x times one plus one over x squared dx, and then plus the integral from zero to infinity of the same thing. Great. And now I'm gonna do the same sort of substitution that I did before. I'm gonna skip the breaking it into limits. If you wanna see those details, you should try them on your own and just follow the steps that I did earlier. So here I'll make a u substitution, which is u equals x minus one over x. That's gonna make du equal to one plus one over x squared dx. Great, and so that is a nice completion of this integral into just an f of u du type thing. And then we'll do the exact same thing over here. So u is equal to x minus one by x. That makes du equal to one plus one over x squared dx. And so again, there's my du and here's my u within that function f. Great. And so this gives me the integral of f of u du plus another integral of f of u du. Now we need to talk about the bounds of integration. So notice as x approaches minus infinity, this thing is going to approach minus infinity as well. So let's write that in. So as x approaches minus infinity, this guy also approaches minus infinity. And that's because the one over x term goes to zero and then the x term goes to minus infinity. And then as x approaches zero from below, so it's negative numbers that are getting very, very close to zero. Well, this x is approaching zero, but then this minus one over x is going, going to approach plus infinity because the minus sign will cancel out by the inherent negativeness of the fact that we're approaching from below. So what that tells us is this switches to an integral from minus infinity to infinity. Great, now let's play the same game over there. So now as x 
approaches zero from above, what happens to that? So this x goes to zero and this minus one over x is going to go to minus infinity. So that gives us a lower bound here of minus infinity. And then furthermore, as x approaches infinity, then this one over x is going to approach zero and the x will approach infinity. So we get infinity. Good. So that next thing that we want to do is do just a simple substitution u equals x and combine these two seeing that they're the same integral at this point. So that's going to give us twice the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx. And now we look at our extreme right hand side and left hand side of this calculation and we notice that after dividing by two, we get exactly our goal identity. So we're good. So that's a good place to stop.